Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to another Repot with me. This week is going to be very simple, very chill. I've had a lot going on, but it has been quite a long time since I decided to actually do something with this. This base is a huge chunk of Epi Premnum Cebu Blue and it's been neglected, don't get me wrong. You can see some shit everywhere. There's bits that have rooted into other parts, stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do is today, I'm going to pot it all up into your basic bitch L hole self watering pot. This is really grubby. And I went to clean it up and I couldn't actually find any cleaner that would clean the outside of this. So it might look a bit grubby today, but rest assured I will clear this up. But honestly, it's just been so, 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 so long since I said to myself, right, this isn't worth too much money to the shop anymore. I would really like it for myself and I would like to create a big pretty plant out of it. So today that's what we're gonna do. Aside from what I'm doing in today's video, I'll be honest with you, this is a very life update-y kind of video. There's a lot of good news, there's a lot of exciting things. I have a mini horse update for you as well. If you don't like that, if you don't wanna know anything about me, this probably is not the video for you, okay? It's not gonna stop me talking about these things because I know that you guys enjoy that so much, but I'm just letting you know if you want plant content, there is literally any other video on my channel that you can watch for plant content. But today we're gonna go through some updates because I have waited to give you these updates, guys. Some of these are like, oh my God, some of these are like two year updates, okay? So we're gonna get through it. But first, I think what I should probably do is get this out of the pot. You might notice I've actually put one of these Ikea trays down. If you're wondering where this is from, it's just like a little, I think it's supposed to be for shoes like a shoe tray. And I don't think they're very much money from Ikea, but they're quite good for potting mats if you don't need something huge, I guess. It really protects the surface of your table. And at least in this case, it's probably gonna protect from the lecker noise. So I'm gonna pour what's in here into the bucket that I have on the floor down here, and then we'll get to it. Right, well, that's fun. Give it a bit of a shake. Now, I kind of expected this, to be honest, because I've said this a million times, when you import plants, a lot of the time, if it's gone really dry in shipping and then you saturate it again, it's, the root is dead anyway and it's just gonna rot. Don't get me wrong, we have some great white growth, that's awesome, but if I turn this round, you'll actually see where all of the rot is. Can you see that? Please focus. My camera doesn't really like focusing on anything other than me today, despite me literally pushing that in front of the camera so that you can't see me. It does not want to focus, my God, come on. That is ridiculous. That is right in front of the bloody camera. Okay, well, we're not gonna get that. So you just have to take my word for it that all that nasty, well, black shit is shit. But we're gonna get all that off anyway. We're gonna give it a trim. It's gonna look sexy. What I might do is these long bits here that have grown into something. I'm not gonna let them be the vine of the plant, even though that's really pretty. I'm gonna cut it and propagate it and use it to make this plant more full at a later date because I'm just gonna lose those roots if I leave them the way they are. And that's a really good starting point for a plant. So that's probably what we're gonna do there. I've got the same thing down here, but they're more aerial roots. Anyway, that's the thing you see. For Americans, I'm pretty sure you can just get big pots of this stuff. So you might be thinking, oh, okay, right, weird. Not over here. You can't get that in the UK. I don't know if you can get that in Europe but you definitely can't in the UK. They're not selling pots of this yet. So although this is sort of easy to get, it's kind of not, not in bulk anyway. So that's what we're gonna be doing. I'm going to try and keep this as grouped together as I can, because obviously this formation's grown really nicely. So I'm gonna try and get this shit off with kind of like minimal root disturbance. So we'll see how it goes. Right then, on with the show. Let me get some blue roll as such, just so I can keep wiping it off so I can see my phone. Very quick one. Oh my God, I'm gonna sneeze. No. <sighs> Oh, sneezes are very conflicting, aren't they? Because you want to sneeze in it, you don't, and you want to, and you don't, and you're sad when you can't, and it's just... <sighs> so I've had a few people now ask me about content on the second channel. I'm gonna briefly just go into it. There's no right weird stuff going on. It's just, I can't really make content for my second channel whilst I don't have a new place to live because it's just too difficult. You know, I'm in with my parents at the minute. It's just, it's not great. So that is actually why you haven't seen any content on there. That will change in the future, of course, but that is why there isn't any at the minute. And I plan on doing all kinds of videos on there, but obviously there will be more makeup content, skincare content, all that good shit, right? 
but it can't be yet. So if you just bear with me, I'm sure by Christmas, I should be starting to produce content. Maybe we can have a really cool December and I'll get some videos going, but that is the plan. I haven't neglected it. I haven't um, forgotten about it. I haven't stopped caring about it. I'm really wanting to do content on that channel. It's just not really possible at the minute. What am I gonna do, film it in here? Can you imagine? Can you imagine a makeup video in here? I think I'd sweat the makeup off. It's hard enough actually standing here now under lights, trust me. And this is with all the heating off in the shop as well. So yeah, second channel, basically that is the tea. It's just, uh, haven't been able to do it really. Oh, is that rot? No, that's not rot, okay. Oh, this is nasty. I wonder if I can just pull some of this. Oh, it's just gonna come straight off. Ew, ew, ew. Right, the next question. Someone asked me, I'm really sorry, I can't remember how you phrased your question, but it was something to do with how do you, is it how do you feel about different YouTube updates or do different YouTube updates? And you were talking about like shorts and things like that. I can't remember how you worded it. I wanted to talk to you guys about that really briefly actually, because do, does anyone care about shorts? I made one a little while ago just to test to see if, if anyone cared essentially. Um, you know, what views they would get and just all that usual YouTuber stuff. And although everyone seems to say that shorts and reels and stuff are the way to go, I don't know if anyone cares enough. So I guess what I'm asking is here, what format would you like different pieces of content in? Like is, is TikToks and shorts something that you would like? Because on the subject of TikToks, the same thing actually applies to second channel content. I need a home really for TikToks because I wouldn't necessarily just make plant related TikToks to be honest. I, I, I really fancy just having a bit of a laugh. So, oh, sorry, I'm keeping, I keep wanting to sneeze real bad. Ew! So I, I kind of want your opinion on what you think of, of stuff like that. Like, do you watch shorts? Do you watch reels? Do you watch TikToks? Like, what, what are you feeling? What are you saying? That's what I really want to know. Okay, I don't think I'm going to be not fighting back sneezing this entire video. I don't know what it is, but the, the urge to sneeze is a lot. And this, by the way, I really should have put gloves on. They're upstairs, done for now. I'm just gonna have to actually ugh, keep putting my hands through this. This is horrible. Oh, try not to think about it, try not to think about it. Right, what else do I have for you guys? A lot of people have been asking me and you know it's coming, so if you don't like horses, this is the point you need to skip forward. People have been asking me for a horse update and it's actually taken a long time to be able to give you one, to be honest. So, where do I start? Where did we leave it? Let's start there, shall we? So anyone that has no idea what I'm talking about, I'll bring you up to speed really quickly if this is the first time you're hearing of this. I bought a horse in November uh, 2021. So November just gone. And essentially he turned out to be not so good. He turned out to be very aggressive, um, very unsafe behavior under saddle. And I essentially went back to the owner and, and said, you know, you've missold me a horse because the owner described him as really safe, blah, 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 done it all, safe as houses, best horse ever, all of the rest. Long story short, he was not. I spoke to the owner about it and said, look, please, I'd like to send him back. He's not right for me. He's not the things you said. I don't want any fuss at all. I don't want any compo or anything like that. I just want to send you the horse back and just refund me. Just refund me. To summarize, the owner, told me to fuck off, essentially. Not in those words, but she may as well have. I asked her again a couple of days later, if, look, please, this is not right. I do have a right to return this horse. This is not, this is not on. Can I please return him for a refund? The horse is in the same condition. I'm happy for you to speak to my livery owner about any of the problems we've all experienced because my livery owner experienced all of the things. We can give you a lot of clarity and we can tell you what's going on so you better know and whatever else, even though there's no way this owner didn't know about this. But anyway, we're still super helpful. And I sort of said, look, please, I don't want to have to go down a legal route on this horse. That's not, I'm not asking that. Just please kindly send him back. You and I both know he's not right. I don't want any fuss. Just take him back, refund me, I will move on. Owner said no. Um, the owner said, I don't really care what you come up with me with, not in these exact words, I'm just summarizing here. I don't really care about legal action. I have video evidence that this horse is 
absolutely fine and there are no problems and I can get loads of owners to testify that he's fine. So there are tons of details on this. There is, I, there is a video where I went into the whole breakdown of what happened with the horse. I'm pretty sure the title of that video is called What I've Been Dealing With. So if you want to search for that and then find out the whole story of me buying him and everything else and what happened to him, then you can look at that video. But I don't want to bore everyone with the same updates all the time. So, so where do we get up to? We sent a letter out in January basically saying, hi, now we're at a legal point because I hired a solicitor to basically take over. And my solicitor wrote a letter detailing the case, detailing everything that I've mentioned in that other video, and basically saying, look, my client seeks a refund. She has a right under the Consumer Rights Act to return this horse if you are found to be a trader in court. So if you've seen my Dish the Dirt video on the, the you know, the Philodendron Pink Congo stuff, the newer one, then you'll know that I talked about being a trader or a private seller. There are some differences between those things, but generally you can still win in court if someone has missold something to you. It's not just, you know, if they're not a trader, then you're, you're screwed. That's not the case. That's what they would like you to think, but it's not the case. And that's how I knew that for that video. I'd done all my research prior anyway for the horse. So basically we said to her, look, we don't want to take this to court. We would like to settle. All my client wants is for you to take the horse back and for you to refund her the money she paid for the horse. The horse. But if, you know, we go to court and you're found to be not guilty, liable, whatever you want to call it, or, or at least guilty of mis-selling um, some goods, that, that is criminal, to be fair. I don't know why I'm saying liable. It is criminal. Then my client could claim costs. So that would be potentially my legal costs and my expenses for keeping the horse in a livery. Because at the moment he is in full-time care. I have not seen him since maybe January, something like that. Um, he's too aggressive to even be near, so it's, it's not a lot of point me going to see him really. So yeah, she basically said, you know, that's what we're gonna do. I'll fast forward this quite some time because I know people don't wanna hear about it twice, but she essentially wrote back, no, this is the crack. It's not our fault. He was fine, blah, blah, blah. There's some, there was some major inconsistencies with the reply anyway. But she basically said, go off and enjoy your horse, which is such an insult because literally you couldn't miss this horse being aggressive and everything else. This isn't like just a random behavior that's popped out. This is, this is him, okay? And I don't hold that against him. And I've gone into that in a previous video. So anyway, in their response, they basically said, if you're gonna take this to court, you need to do the following. And one of them, one of the things they asked to do was for me to provide a copy, shall we say, of all of the conversations that me and Ben had had over WhatsApp, for example. And this is because Ben was there when I tried the horse, everything else, Ben witnessed all the behavior. So that's one of the things they wanted they wanted statements of the horses, like care regime, feed schedule, turnout regime, all of the rest. And was there anything else they wanted? I think that might have been it. There was a couple of other things, but that's basically what they were after. But they had these, they had some really stupid demands that didn't really amount to much, to be honest. So basically, they said all that, probably hoping to deter me. And then at the end, they were like, Trust that settles it, that it's not actually going to court. We're not settling, we're not doing anything. Go off and enjoy your horse. So I was like, oh, okay then. Give me one minute, guys. We need to plant this up. Just put this in here. I think the best thing to do is to plant this and then arrange it. Now I haven't got all the rot off, to be honest. I've got a lot off. A lot of it actually looks like rot, but isn't, but that's kind of the best I can do here. So we wrote our response. I didn't write it, solicitor did. In our response, we sent what they asked for. So we sent the care regime off for the horse, so his turnout, his feed, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, he's not been exercised at the minute. He is literally enjoying life in a field. He's very flat, he's awesome, because he can't be ridden because of how he is. So we sent that off. We sent off the witness statement from my livery owner. 
that has dealt with this horse since he came into the livery because basically he was aggressive on day one and he has been consistently aggressive since then, obviously. So we sent off that witness statement as well, so they will enjoy that quite a bit. I must say this reply has been very delayed um, because, well, I'll get on to why it's been delayed in a minute, but this is the reply to that original letter, guys. It has been a little while, I'm not going to lie. Give me one moment. So we sent off that. We did not send off conversations between me and Ben because we didn't talk about the horse and it's essentially client privilege. I don't have to disclose my private conversations with someone else unless I intend to rely on them in court. And I don't really know what use two novices talking to each other on WhatsApp about anything actually are. I suspect they wanted us to send that to them so they could try and comb through it to catch us out on something. I have no idea. But we're not sending that. We've essentially ignored that request because it's a stupid request. Obviously, I don't need to send my private conversations with someone else when they don't even involve the horse. I don't really get that. I think, genuinely, they were just trying to make it really difficult for me and basically put me off um, doing any further work with prep for a case. That's the only reason I can come up with anyway, and that's certainly what my solicitor seems to think as well. Um, although she did think, oh, maybe they don't have some of the chats, um, some of the old WhatsApps now, and that's why she wants them. Again, I don't really know. I'm not entirely sure, but that is the tea anyway. Does this still look as good as it did? Not really, but it'll be fine. So, give me a minute. In addition, obviously they got a letter in response and a couple of other documents thrown in. So, there's a few things wrong with this horse. The first is he is aggressive. He is aggressive in his stable. He's not really aggressive out of the stable. If you take him out of the stable, he's not so bad. He's very aggressive in the stable. He also likes to drop his shoulder at random points riding him in the school. And that isn't just novice riders, by the way. That's very experienced riders as well. This horse, if you've been following, has unseated some extremely experienced riders. So there's two problems he has. The advert said no vices. There are all kind of vices, like the, the biting, biting when you do his girth up, all the, the, a lot of the usual stuff that people could put up with. Not only that, but when he was advertised, he was advertised as safe as houses, great for novices, he never tanks off, which is extremely interesting to note given that's exactly what he does, and he's essentially a jumping machine. Now, I'm aware that I bought this horse knowing it could jump, right? My theory on buying this horse was that he was great with novices, he'd also done a lot of things, so he's very experienced, and if I ever wanted to move up to even trying jumping at a really low level or anything like that, this horse could take me there. I wouldn't need to buy another one because I didn't want to possibly have to do that and part ways with a horse when I know that I would love him more than anything. So that was my background and that's why I chose him. And he was supposed to do all those things. But one of the things that the seller said he did really, really well, and I mean really, really well, was jumping. And the advert actually said that he was a jumping machine and he could jump one meter 15. Now it's really interesting that. It turns out that the owners before me only actually had the horse around two to three months before I got him. So I'm not really sure what they could possibly know about him, really. I didn't know this at the time of sale, of course, but it's very interesting to me because my solicitor went and got the show jumping record for this horse while it was in the care of this owner and her son. And it's very interesting, guys, because it turns out in the short time they had this horse, out of 14 competitions that the son did on this pony, the pony was eliminated in eight of them. Eight out of 14, that's over 50%. Now, I'm not really a lawyer or anything, but I'm pretty sure that you can't really call a horse a jumping machine when it doesn't jump more than 50% of the time. And again, I'm talking about that purely in a legal sense. You can't advertise a horse as being a jumping machine if the horse is known to put in a lot of refusals. You just can't, you just can't. So that's really interesting. And I imagine, as the letter has gone out this week, when the owner gets that letter, 
she might be a little bit annoyed by that because she was probably not expecting us to look that up. So ironically, one of the strongest cases that we have on this horse is not even dropping the shoulder or the aggression. Because honestly, you could have two parties sort of argue that out in court all day long, couldn't you? With evidence for, evidence against, blah, 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 blah. He wasn't like this with me. He is with you. Or what have you done to him? Blah, 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 blah. You can do that all day. I totally get that. But... <laughs> You can't really do that with the show jumping records and they are proper BSG, it's proper records. Like apparently you can't, not anyone can just get them. My solicitor had to ask for them and the, the association were like, uh, no, why do you want these? And they basically had to say, look, we're in litigation over a horse. Sorry, I need to repot this again. There's some bits missing. That's annoying, isn't it? Uh, wait there. Yeah, the solicitor had to say, look, we're in litigation over a horse. We, we must we, we must have these documents. It's, it's very integral to, you know, a, a future court case, basically. So they had no choice but to send them over. So that was fun. So that's a nice little extra nugget, guys, that's going out in the mail. And I would really like to think at this point that this owner will look and think to herself, okay, shit. I can't argue with that in court. That is not something that you can dispute, that you can come up with a reason for. Like you just can't, you can't. It's not something you can do. And I really hope that this time, as a last ditch effort, because this is the last letter before it is caught, um, I hope that she just thinks, okay, I have fucked up. This is what I'm gonna do. Because she's just being what I like to call an idiot. Just an idiot. These people, guys, I don't know if I have mentioned how wealthy they are, but these are literally multi-millionaires, these people, right? And I'm, I'm not just saying it. I mean multi-millionaires, and they can't be bothered to just settle a wrong that they did out of court. Because in my letter, I have said at this point, I'm not willing to just take back the original purchase price of the horse because it has been a considerable amount of time since, you know, I asked them and they, they told me to fuck off that they're not. So from my point of view, it's like, no, you're not, you're not getting off with it with just a refund now. I need some compo because you've really, you've really gone and done it now. And my solicitor's fees are mounting. So, oh, hello, pop that in. So I'm not really prepared to settle for that anymore. So we have put an offer in for the majority of my expenses back on the horse as well. And that does not include legal, basically. So it doesn't include anything my solicitors had to do and all that money. That's just literally some of the livery expenses, the insurance, the vets, stuff like that, basic care, farrier, all of that. Because really, this is her fault. I'm entitled to a refund and I shouldn't be having to pay for this horse when it should have been returned. Does that make sense? So that is something that we are working towards. Now, the letter probably only went out yesterday, so I do not have the joyous ability to tell you how that went, but I guarantee it'll ruin their week, to be honest, because it's been so long now that they probably think that I went away and enjoyed my horse. And they probably thought, ha, that'll show her. See, she's gone. Job done. Well, I hate to tell you, you wrong as hell. And I genuinely hope I irritate the shit out of you because this is just, it's beyond a joke at this point. I don't understand why the owner has to be this way. They lose nothing, guys. They lose nothing. All they have to do is take the horse back and sell it again to someone else that can deal with his behavior and be honest. They haven't lost money. Remember that. They haven't lost any money. They could literally take him back and sell him on. Do the right thing. That's all, it costs nothing for them to do that. I would pay to even have him dropped off. I don't care. Do you know what I mean? But they won't. My solicitor, seems to think that they might just settle out of court. And I would love to think that, I really would. But 
I I can't really because they have so much money. These people, they they're not going to care. Honestly, they're not going to care. Where where court frightens me in terms of the cash, it don't frighten these people. This is like, it's not even pocket money to these people, like literally. So we'll see what happens there. But I don't personally think that they're going to settle um, out of court. I genuinely think this is going to the end. And again, real big shame because. It would be so easy to do the right thing. It'd be so easy to do the right thing. So that's where we stand, guys. I've made an offer for most of my expenses back and the price of the horse all going to court. And I can only hope really that her solicitor reads this and goes, hey, oh, they've kind of got you kind of fucked there with the whole jumping thing because it's irrefutable. It's literally irrefutable evidence. So it would be real great if her solicitor read this letter and basically said they've kind of got you by the bollocks there you're going to have to settle i advise you to settle now and negotiate and i don't know try and bring the figure i've asked for down or whatever else which yeah fine literally fine but if she's the woman i think she is she's going to go no this little peasant is not getting the best of me she can go to court and i think she will do that so me and my sister in, are in kind of disagreement about that a little bit over what we think is going to occur. Let me know what you think, if you think this person is going to settle. I realize you don't really have enough information, but it's fun to chat, is it not? Again, I just, I can't see it happening. I really can't see it happening. Horses are just such a, dare I say, a sore spot for me now. They really are like, I should be having the best time in the world. I just should, and I just haven't. And, it is what it is at this point. There's not a lot I can do about it except just get this resolved. But I think realistically I'm going to court, guys. So yeah, this is the last letter now. Unless they start to negotiate on how much they want to settle for, that's different. But assuming they basically tell me to do one, this is the last letter now before we just issue court proceedings on them. And we go to court, which is literally going to be kind of like Amber Heard, Johnny Depp, in which case we'll go in. There will be a barrister, there will be cross-examination, there will be all of that, all of that stuff. So that's what I've got to look forward to if that occurs. Um, I'm not really thinking that I would lose if I went to court because I think I've got plenty of evidence and I'm not being funny, I'm telling the truth about everything. So I'm not really worried about whether I would win or not. I think it would take some fluke for me to not win. Um, what I wish is that the owner just knew that you know what I mean? Just was just reasonable. Thought, hey, maybe this isn't worth it. Um, because I tell you something, if I win, I will want all my expenses back. I will want the price for the horse back. And I'll probably try and claim legal back. So that'll cost her a lot more to argue with me in a room with more people that I have to pay to be there because I'm going to pay expert witnesses as well, all the same. So I hope she has sense, but I don't know. We'll see. And that is basically my horse update. So the next time we speak on a horse update, um, I will be able to tell you a lot more about what's going on. Given that the letter probably went out today or yesterday, they have two weeks to respond from the date of that letter. So you should find out within a month, I think, what, what is happening and what we're going to do. Ugh, it's just sad, isn't it, guys? It really is just sad. It's not where this whole journey was supposed to take me, but I am still learning, by the way, I'm still learning to, to ride and everything else. My personal training has gone, has got me a long way with it because I'm so much stronger, I can handle a lot more. And I am loving that, let me tell you. I did not think that strength alone would improve my riding so much. So that's definitely good, it's on the up. But still costing me a ton of money to learn to ride whilst paying for a horse. <laughs> It couldn't have gone any worse, could it really? It just couldn't. So that's that anyway. Right, before we continue, I just want to find out where that big, big old root went. Was it here? Cut that there. And I'm going to root this separately, probably maybe even like that. I'll just see what I want to do. I'm going to root them separately, just in water or whatever have you. And then when they're big enough, I will probably add to this and, and do whatever. Now, I think the aerials I might leave out. I haven't decided. I'm still kind of trying to unbraid this plant. So let's see. See what it do. It's all right, isn't it? Does it look bad on camera? It doesn't look great, does it? Is that the really yellow one? Yeah, okay, we'll cut that off. Right then, should we go for some good updates now? Because I think, I think I'm in, in, I'm due a good update, okay? The first really good update I have for you is about 
the house situation. So you might remember I did my tax return in April of this year and I said, look, I, I need to see if I can get a mortgage and, and everything else because self-employed people, it's not easy. It is not easy. So <sighs> the story of, of me getting that mortgage is, is a lot. And if you're interested, I will tell you in another report because it involves me being ghosted a lot, um, different companies arguing between themselves and it's just it was a nightmare i had a mortgage then i didn't then i did then i didn't and it was it was a nightmare but i have a i've secured a mortgage on a house and basically i'm waiting for that house to be built <laughs> it's nearly done i think it's uh it's due in september sometime so my big news is i actually found a house and i signed up for it in april but and I think you guys caught it on my last report with me. I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to jinx it because I didn't want to say anything until the contracts were exchanged and everything else. But as of maybe about three days ago, I signed the contract for the house, all the deeds, stuff like that, the mortgage, blah, 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 blah. So I thought now was probably a safe time to tell you about it. So I'm absolutely delighted that I'm gonna have my own place that is going to be local to this place. So that's gonna be great. So I guess it's a waiting game for that. It doesn't help that that obviously costs me a lot of money with the deposit and I'm saving up for solicitor's fees and everything else. There's a whole bunch of other stuff coming. My teeth are due in, when are they due? About 15 weeks from today. So I don't actually have the money to pay for those when they come around. So I don't know what I'm gonna do there, but Basically, I'm grafting my ass off to try and afford everything in time. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to do it because the court case, I have to assume this is going to court, obviously. Um, that's going to that's gonna cost a bit of money. And I don't even know how much it's going to cost, but several thousand, no problem. Um, I hope I would get that money back if I won. I don't know if my legal expenses are guaranteed to come back or it's just you can ask and you might get them, so I may not. Um, but at least I should get the other stuff back, right? So it's kind of all hands on deck, but I'm really, really pleased to be able to tell you that I have a house and I'm so excited about it. I will be living alone. It will be awesome because I can decorate it exactly how I want. And I will actually speak on that very briefly because last report with me, I started talking to you guys about interior design styles. And I think I said like, um, guess which one you think I am. So I think a few of you guessed, I'd have to look at the video, but a few of you guessed Scandinavian, which I get why. I have a lot of Ikea furniture, I, I totally get that. And I do like things quite minimal, makes a lot of sense. A few of you said mid-century modern, which I don't really like <laughs> at all. It's very, very popular, don't get me wrong. It's like a super popular um, decor style that a lot of people are into. It's not really my vibe. What else? I can't remember the other, the other ones that people are into. I don't think anyone suggested boho. I think boho is my least favorite. I know it's like the number one YouTube favorite planty person's decor, but it's just not mine, guys. It's just not mine. Um, so I'll tell you what, what my style is because I didn't get to tell you guys. My style of decor, and this took me a while to work out. I did like 50 different quizzes. I had to keep looking at pictures, working out what I liked, working out what I didn't like and everything else, down to color schemes, down to everything. And my interior design style is transitional. Now you're probably thinking, what the hell is transitional, right? Transitional is essentially a blend of traditional and modern, but it's not like super, if you imagine all the really old traditional stuff where it's all super rounded off, upholstered, garish patterns, none of that. So I will put in pictures of what I'm talking about because it's damn near impossible to explain it. But it's essentially if I were to have a transitional style house, the house is on a very, very subtle, bright, neutral color palette. Not a lot of color going on at all. A lot of gray, grayish, taupe. Um, very gentle colors, off-whites, things like that. I'm gonna do some accents of black in there, very small amounts, um, things like that. I think my kitchen is actually dove gray because I picked it a couple of weeks ago. So it's that kind of thing and you would have very clean, simple lines, but you kind of mix square with round and it's just, it's a very nice way of having a traditional sort of look, 
except it's really light, fresh, and minimal. It's a really popular style, to be honest. It's a style a lot of hotels have. So if you see that really clean, sleek, modern look, but it's also kind of traditional, it's a bit like that. And I realize I've butchered that explaining that because I don't, I don't do this for a living. So I don't know how to explain it very well, but I will have put in some images for you, probably from my own Pinterest of things that I'm kind of vibing with. So I will show you that. We can do a whole discussion really on the house and like my plans for it with plans and stuff in another video because it would take a long time. But for now, I just wanted to update you on that. So my move-in date is, it's not, even official, it's gonna be sometime in September when it's finished and basically they're going to call me four weeks before and tell me you get your key in four weeks. So I have a whole house to furnish and not really any cash to do it with, so that's a problem. <laughs> but I have a whole house to furnish because I don't actually have any furniture at all. So that's gonna be fun. So we'll see what happens, but I'm so excited and I'm so proud to be able to do that. And I think it's going to be the start of some really, really awesome content. So what I alluded to at the start of the video, obviously, was that I, I need a house for certain videos and stuff like that. I would love to do more vloggy stuff. I'd love to do more makeup stuff. I'd even do some interior design stuff if people are interested, like using plants and interior design. There's so many things I wanna do. I wanna do videos about reading, because I want to read. I'm gonna build a little reading nook in the corner of my living room. Um, it's gonna be awesome, but I need you to bear with me because it's gonna be a long while until I can really get content going in that house, probably due to the fact I won't have furniture. So that's gonna be interesting. I don't even know when I can move into it because I need the furniture first. So it's gonna be a wild journey, guys, but I'm so, honestly, I'm so delighted that I have been able to do that and find that. And I genuinely feel very, very blessed. It's a modest enough house. Um, there's a really weird misconception on this channel that people seem to think I'm some kind of millionaire and I don't get it. Um, I'm not. I literally, I think, I think a few people would owe me some apologies <laughs> if they actually knew the truth because that's just not the case. What you see behind you guys is a limited company. It's not my money. That's not how it works. And to those that do own a limited company, you will understand what I'm talking about. My money and the company's money, completely different things. Completely different things. I live off my YouTube earnings. So anyway, it's gonna be a struggle to get stuff for it, but I'm gonna do my best. And if sponsorships and stuff like that come on on the channel, yes, I will be taking them. I know I've said this before, but I need all the help I can get because I also have to pay for the court case and some other stuff as well, unless by sheer fluke, the owner sells, but we have to assume at this point. So, so I'm just cutting these up so that I can put them in a little jar and propagate them because they've already got some cute little roots and I can make another cute little plant. And then if I want to, I can push it back into there or I can make a smaller one. So that's what I'm doing at the minute. I'm just making sure that I've got some really cute little ones here. That's got a lot of root on that. I'll just see if I can pull that off without actually ruining the whole thing. So that's that really. I have one last update for you. And it kind of came off the back of a story post that I popped on the Rare Plant Shop's Instagram less than a week ago now, I think. Obviously for you, it'd be a bit longer. Um, because I've been testing out some feed, some fertilizer, and I tested a fertilizer out against a leading brand or the leading brand of liquid fertilizer. And I put some pictures up on um, the Rare Plant Shop's Instagram, and I'll, I'll probably just paste them in here so you know what I'm actually talking about right now, otherwise you're gonna be like, what are you talking about? I've been comparing a feed to that feed to see if it's better. And someone asked me about it, and it is, it's not quite ready yet, but I'm gonna tell you about it anyway because someone asked, and it's, it's nearly ready. I'm kind of, I'm very happy with the formula. It's my feed. I've been working on a feed now for a little bit over a year. I think it was the beginning of last year I started working on it. And I've been working on a feed that will serve both um, soil and semi-hydro and stuff like that. And obviously something that would serve the plants that I essentially sell. So anything you see here does the feed work. And I've been doing loads of experiments. I've been tweaking the formula. I've been working on branding. I've been doing a lot of shit behind the scenes, guys. And I'm so, so, so excited for the day that I can actually share it with you. It's a little bit off. I'm not really sure how far off it is. It should be this year though, for sure. 
But yeah, I've been developing a feed and you might have seen it in some videos. I think it's down here actually. I've got a new batch just coming in. Um, I think it's coming today. I've been developing a few things, but literally I'll take off the dilution because we've changed it. But this in videos is what I've been using. Um, I've been testing my own feed. I've been making my own feed. I haven't been making that myself, by the way. I've been partnering with a, a large company to do it. I don't know how to mix feed. You know what I'm saying? This isn't like a homebrew thing going on, but I've been developing it. I've been testing it, been testing it against a leading competitor and the photos that you will see, at least on the screen now, were astonishing. I was so surprised. I'm going to repeat these experiments for the sake of when I, I launch my product and I sell it and it'll be very scientifically done with proper photos because these weren't proper photos. This was just sort of tweaking a formula. But I essentially took equivalent plants um, of different ones that you'll see there. And I fed one tray with the leading brand and then I fed one tray with mine and I left them three months and I fed them once in that time. And boom, literally crazy, 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 crazy. I think the most shocking were the philodendron, actually. I think I had Gloriosum that just went nuts and a Florida ghost that went nuts as well. There was like no comparison. Um, so I'm really, really excited. I can't tell you anything else. I can't tell you anything else. It's really soon. But honestly, guys, I'm working on it and I'm so excited about it. I can't put into words. I've been working on this for so, 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 so long. So I will give you full details on that at some point when it's ready. It's not ready, but a few people have been saying, hey, are you working on a feed or something? Like, what are you doing? And normally I wouldn't say anything until it happens, um, you know me, but I don't know if I want to keep another secret. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So that's it, basically. I won't be telling you anything else, so there's no point in probing, but that's what I'm doing, and I'm very excited. I'm so, so, so excited about this formula. So I've got a new batch that's just come in. It was either today or yesterday. I'm going to start on that. I'm going to take a new fresh batch of plants, similar roots, similar leaves, as similar as they can possibly be. And I'm going to pit them against the competitor again and see if I can replicate the same results because I've tweaked the formula a little bit. So very, very excited. You'll find out in due course. But I think that concludes today's video. I know I didn't do a whole lot, but that was not the plan anyway. It was more of an update -y type video. This is kind of what we're left with. Obviously, I will put him in his outer pot. He don't look great, but he don't look terrible. I think he will grow nice and big. There's so many aerials on here. I don't know what I'm going to do. I might just let him grow a little bit, and then at some point I might cut this back, do more of this, and then pop it back in. We'll just, we'll play it by ear. But that's kind of him at the minute anyway. I'll pop him back down. He's so cute. These, I'm going to find a little jar for them, and essentially, just root them for a bit and then put them in a little pot, maybe a little lechuz or something like that and grow them out. So that is what I'm doing today. That was a whole bunch of updates for you. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm now really excited now that I've been talking about my feed. I'm so excited. Um, I think like two people know about it. So I'm really, really happy about that. And I guess that concludes today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Was it short or was it not short? It wasn't that short. It's probably the same as normal. So I hope you enjoyed that anyway. Again, if you don't like this sort of stuff, if you don't like my updates, I'm not really expecting to hear any complaints about it in the comments because I did say you could just click off and it wasn't the video for you. So if you're one of these people that likes to leave comments telling me that they don't care about my personal life, I would argue that's a bit odd given that you could have just clicked off anyway. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video, guys. Please leave any comments you'd like to down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.